Hi, it's Mark Ganser, Technical Account Manager at EAC Product Development Solutions with this week's Tip of the Week. What we're going to do today is look at using relations to streamline family tables. And the best way to really explain what I mean by that is show you an example. Now here we've got one of the simplest seed models for your average family table of Bolt. We've only got three features, but we're going to use this to make a bunch of other instances. So let's go to the tools family table and when I start adding columns things I can change oh I've got to have let's see the, the dimension across the flats the height of the bolts then I've got to go to the shaft and say length and of course the diameter major diameter oh and if we've got a cosmetic thread on there which by the way if we turn it to no hidden line you can see that there we're gonna need the thread length we're gonna need the minor diameter okay so we've already got as you can see we're already running out of real estate with this number of columns and this is a simple example and I'm sure we've all seen examples of uh, family tables where you got 20 30 columns going uh, down the line well really on an example like this everything is really the only thing we care about are the dimension of the bolt and the the high, the uh, length of the bolt itself Every, all the other parameters we're looking at here are really dependent upon the major diameter so why can't we do that with relations instead and keep this a bit cleaner well, let's show you how that might work. Let's switch over to a different model here. Actually, the same model. Clean. All right, so let's start this over again. Let's create some relations instead to start out with. And I'll go to the same Tools tab. We'll go to Relations. And like all good people doing relations, let's put dividers in here. Anything with a forward slash and an asterisk, by the way, is regarded by the relations editor as a comment so it's always nice in any code you make to enter a lot of comments so anybody else knows what you're doing Boy, that's an extra added tip today isn't it so let's say for example we are going to figure out what the dimensions are for this head but we're going to be several options on here so let's say let's start with an if if and we'll say the major diameter is equal to and you need two equals for a condition quarter inch then we would set the height equal to whatever the height is and gosh I'm thinking way back is it 1164 so we'll go with that and we'll say the dimension across the flats I don't have that right in front of me but let's say that was equal to 7 sixteenths and we're also based on that major diameter we would also go into the threads are going to be minor diameter is equal to let's say I think that's 219 I'll get lots of hate mail if I'm wrong and there are different choices on the length you got to have at least for this size of bolt three quarters of an inch of thread so I'm gonna say hey if the length is less than or equal to then the thread length is equal to the length and if it's greater than that which is an else the length is equal to that 0 0.75 minimum we need an end if to close that and another one to close the whole thing a lot of times it's easier by the way spaces are ignored so for nested ifs you can do something like this so you can see right at a glance what those things are going with and I could do this for all of these but I would have to go in back and do that for each of these diameters and such but luckily I've done that for you here you can see all of those tables right now where if the major diameter is this here are all the other dimensions now if the major diameter is 5 16 everything changes a little bit and the minimum number of thread goes up so let's grab this whole thing and let's go back into that relations editor get rid of that whole schmear 
we'll paste what we have in. So now we've done everything from a quarter inch all the way up to seven eighths. And I'm assuming, but in this case, by the way, UNC. But you could take this further. You could uh, put UNF in here. You could go for all the other intermediate smaller lengths, you know, number eight, number 10, whatever you wanted to do. So now with that being done, all we really have to enter on our family table are a couple things. We need to know, and let's grab this guy, the length and that major diameter. Because all of the other parameters really are based on that, like they really would be in any bolt. So now when I go in here and I create any instance, I've just got to say, well, how big do I want the length? What's the major diameter, the nominal thread size? We could do this all day long, inch and a half long. Maybe it's a half inch bolt. Verify those, and you can see if you grab any one of these instances, you'll see its length there. Much easier, too, when you're placing these bolts somewhere in an assembly later on, you've only got a couple things to search for, length and major diameter, the things you really care about. You don't have to sort through all the other columns of things that really are not truly independent variables anyway. They are dependent on the major diameter. Now, if you have any questions on this tip or any of the tips you've seen, go ahead and leave a comment below in the comment section below the video or give one of us a call at EAC Product Development Solutions. Thanks and have a great rest of your week.